Hey guys, it's Matt with bleepinjeep.com. This is the front of my Cherokee, and today, let's make a bumper for it. Okay, so this is the front of the Scorpion Crawler project I'm working on here. You can see we've already strengthened the frame up here. And uh, one of the important factors is the ground clearance on this thing. Don't mind this, this is just holding the vehicle up right now, but um, I've cut out the uh, section, the stock section that sits here. Usually it kind of swoops down like this, made out of sheet metal. And I put in this uh, two by two bracing with some uh, pieces on the end there. I've got it up a lot higher. Now I want to do the same thing with the bumper to keep the bumper uh, out of the way as possible. So I'm going to keep the bumper as short as possible, just enough to get a winch on here, and I'm going to get it as high as possible to keep it out of the dirt, out of the rocks, um, to keep it from hanging me up. So uh, let me show you what I've done. So the first step is to make a template. I like to use this foam core board, and uh, this is going to be the top plate of the bumper. Now once I got that done, I made sure that everything was going to fit. Right here you can see where the winch is going to mount. Uh, it's just barely covering the edges of the winch so that those aren't going to get hit um, by the rocks first. It'll first hit the, the bumper. Um, after I got that all cut up, what I did, I needed a bottom also. But the bottom didn't need to be as big. So, I took this piece of a template from the uh, from the top section and that is going to be my bottom section so I'm going to have a top piece here there's going to be about two inches or an inch and three quarter to be exact and then there's going to be the bottom plate so it's not going to be very thick but uh, that's the whole point so this is going to sit right about here let me take you over and show you the steel version So this is what I've been working on here. I've got the top plate, I've got the bottom plate, and then I've got this uh, inch and three quarter DOM tubing. Whoops. Obviously that needs to get welded up. But this uh, tubing, I've cut it in half, right down the middle, and that's gonna get welded onto the edges here, and it's gonna make a nice rounded curve for the front of that bumper. Now let me show you how I did this before I take it apart. At first I used an angle finder and tried to find the angle of that, divide it in half to make those beveled cuts. For some reason that wasn't working out. I'm not real good at math, but what I ended up doing was just eyeballing it, drawing a line straight down uh, the middle of what I thought that angle was going to be. And then I took my piece of tubing, let's say I was going to cut that, and then I just finished that angle like this by eye. And then I, then all I did was I uh, went to the other side, let's see, marked it like this, and then I came back, finished that up. And then I cut that out with the uh, angle grinder. Now I cut all these pieces with the plasma cutter. These uh, flat plates turned out really good. Wasn't real happy about this. When I tried to cut uh, this tubing in half, I uh, should have made a jig. I should have taken my time, made a jig, and um, made it where I could cut straight down the middle of this tubing. Instead, I just laid the tubing uh, on the table and I used my hand to uh, bring that uh, plasma cutter across. It turned out good on one side, like this. Made a nice perfect bevel the way I need it for the welder. On the opposite side though, all the slag was left over and uh, the, the bevel was the opposite direction that I needed it. So, um, you know, it's not a big deal. I'll be able to fix all that when I weld it up, but just wanted to show you guys that. Now let me show you the bottom piece of this. Right now I just have it held together with some magnets and some wood. So that's the bottom plate. I uh, didn't 
take it all the way back to the back just to save some weight. It doesn't need to go all the way to the back. Uh, what I do need to figure out though is um, I need to figure out where the holes need to go for the winch. I also need to figure out where my um, my tabs need to go for the D-ring shackles. Uh, I'm probably going to put those on the bottom and have the D-rings hanging out from the bottom. Um, that's just uh, a pull point. If you don't know, that's uh, where you put your D-ring shackle so you can um, attach it to pull somebody or have somebody pull you. So uh, I don't have those yet. I can make my own um, or I can order one. So right now I have to keep that in mind. Um, I'm also going to put some bracing probably in between the top and bottom plate. That way the, uh, the winch won't bend this quarter inch top plate. And I'm going to try to make it as strong as possible so that uh, I never have to rebuild this sucker. Alright, I tacked it all up and I flipped it over and I can see that we have a problem right here. Um, when I plasma torched that other side it got a lot thinner and I didn't take that into account but I got lucky because, check this out, all I have to do is slide that under, move it forward and I can weld it up just like that. You won't ever know the difference. So, that'll save me a lot of time from going back and having to cut more tubing in half. So I'm just going to do that. Might be a better solution anyway, because um, then you won't be able to see the bottom from the front. It'll look like it just rolls under. Another thing is uh, I need to be very careful the way I weld this up, because uh, I need to add some bracing underneath here and the way it is, if I were to weld this up I wouldn't be able to get uh, my welder in here and weld that bracing. So I have to make sure I do this all in the proper order. And another thing, I need to drill those holes for the winch. I uh, didn't really think about that yet. So, lots more to do before I weld that piece on. Alright, so to find the holes for the mounting locations, let's go back to the template. Um, I've looked it up. This is a winch for my truck that I've got here, but um, I've looked it up and most winches are 10 by 4.5 uh, for the bolt pattern. So I could sit there and measure this all day, but I think what I'm going to try to do is just pull this over the edge. I'll measure it too once I'm done, but I'm just going to poke a, something sharp up through there and wiggle it out. That'll tell me where the holes are. Alright, now let's just double check. 10 inches. 10 inches and four and a half. Four and a half, exactly. I'll measure uh, diagonal too. That's 11 and that's 11. So let's go drill this on the steel. Alright, so let's use a step bit to drill out uh, this hole to fit this bolt. Yes, I do use cutting fluid. Just because you guys don't see it doesn't mean I don't use it. It's right over here. 
a lot of people have commented on that in the past. step bit because you can go a little bit deeper and make a nice little beveled edge on every hole. So here's the bolt that goes through. Now to strengthen this up for the winch, what I want to do is lay some metal strips right through here. That way when we put the bottom piece on, we'll weld both together. It'll be twice as strong. Now I know that this is exactly uh, one and a quarter inches because this was the right height when this was sitting in there. So what I need to do is find some metal strips that are one and a quarter. I've looked through my whole scrap pile. I don't have anything like that. So I'm going to have to make my own. I've already marked it out here. Let's uh, take it to the plasma cutter and then we'll lay these down and weld them in. Since they're not both exactly the same size, I'll take them and uh, put them together before I grind them. That way they will be. Alright, once both edges start to grind, you know that they're both the same. And I just need to grind the uh, extra off the edge of that one. Alright, here's what I want to do now. I want that to sit in the front of the bumper in that little round piece. So, I'm going to uh, bevel that with the angle grinder. I've clamped them both together so I can do it in one swoop here. That's pretty close. Uh, you know what? Right after I tacked this, I broke it off because I realized I just made a huge mistake that cost me probably 45 minutes there. I didn't account for... Remember? Remember when we dropped this down underneath to take up that uh, gap that was right there? I didn't account for that. And therefore, these pieces didn't need to be one and a quarter. All they needed to be was one inch, which I have plenty of that lying around. So I just wasted my time making those brackets. At least I'll have them for something else, maybe. Alright, so, back to the drawing board. All I need to do is recreate these brackets, but in one inch.
Now, let's see if this sucker will fit in there still. I don't remember which way is up now. All right. I think that's gonna work out pretty good. I still need to figure out how I'm gonna mount this to the actual frame. So I'll probably have some more brackets like this over here that uh, widen out as they get out towards the edge. Still haven't figured that one out yet. Okay guys, so I've got the bumper just sitting up here temporarily on a jack to make sure everything looks good. And there's two things that I'm not happy with at the moment. Uh, one of those is I've got this way up here, nice ground clearance, very high. But the problem is the frame is way down here. So I'm going to have to transition from this bottom point of the frame where, it, uh, where the bumper bracket needs to go up to here. And I'm not real happy with that because that loses a lot of my ground clearance. Again, it's way back here. It's not going to affect it as much and it's closer to the tires, but I really want to uh, figure out something to do there. And also, we're talking about um, trying to save as much ground clearance as I can. And for that, I need to get this as back as possible. Now, I've got it pushed back as far as it'll go already, but once I got it up here, I was looking and if you'll notice right here, there's a gap between the radiator and this uh, front grill, which is probably a good three or four inches. If I can figure out a way to move that grill way back up against the radiator, then I could cut a lot of this bumper off and save, uh, you know, two or three inches right there and move everything back. Um, what I'm really trying to go for is a zero degree uh, approach angle. So that means that my tires would be sticking out in front of my bumper so I could approach a, a wall, say a, a brick wall, and just climb right up it without my bumper ever hitting. Um, so for that, I need to get everything pushed back as far as possible. Now I was thinking about a lot of the questions that you guys are gonna have, and I'm sure one of them is gonna be, why don't you just put the bumper, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, the winch, up under here by the flywheel and I could do that but um, I would lose uh, it would be tucked in nicely but I would lose a lot of ground clearance uh, up underneath here probably uh, five or six inches um, so that's one question I was thinking about and then uh, uh, there was one more oh I was thinking you guys are probably gonna ask why I cut these tubes in half and why I didn't just use full tubes and set this on top of it. Well, if you can picture it, if you did that and you set this quarter inch plate on top of a full tube, it wouldn't sit nice and flat here. You'd have this quarter inch drop where it came over the lip. So with this, it just is gonna come off, once I get this welded up, it's gonna come off and just be perfectly rounded uh, like it was made that way. All right, so all that said, I'm gonna put the camera down so I can get to some work here and I will get back with you in a little bit and uh, let you see what I figured out. All right, so I went ahead and finished up this bumper. Well, I almost finished. Um, I'm still waiting on something in the mail, a D-ring shackle uh, tab that I'm gonna weld underneath here so that I can put a D-ring on here, have a place to pull. But otherwise, I've uh, finished it up. Went ahead and just uh, completed it without filming it because I was getting kind of frustrated with this. It's taken way too long. But let me tell you what I did. I took an inch and a half, uh, or an inch and a quarter, I think it was, off of the back side here. And you can see right here, I notched it out, and that way I could push it back further into the frame. And that gets me the minimum bumper that I can have and still put a winch on the front of it. Let me show you the back here, and then I'll uh, put it on the Jeep and show you that. So back here, I've got bracing underneath where the uh, where the uh, winch is going to go. Um, I've got this plate 
which just strengthens the whole thing. And I drilled some holes right here so that I could access those uh, bolt holes for the winch. And then um, over here I finished it off. This was the hardest part probably right here was trying to figure out how to get those brackets in there and um, make it and still fit in there. And I had to really fit this together like a puzzle and weld it together piece by piece so that I could get uh, you know welds back inside here. Obviously I couldn't weld this before I welded this and so on. And I finished off the edge there, drilled the holes for these brackets, and I bent that bracket so that it would look better. Instead of just sticking straight out, I bent it so that it would give it a nice angle. Now, um, I'm going to put my tab, when I get it in the mail, I'm going to put it probably right here, and then I'm going to build a little bit more bracing onto this back side here so that it will um, be strong enough to pull from. Let's put it on the Jeep and show you what it looks like. Alright guys, well there it is. What I did was I pushed the bottom of this grill back as far as it would go uh, and still look good. I didn't want it to be like inverted or anything. And the winch is pretty much all the way up against it. Um, but that just gives me the best possible scenario here as far as uh, uh, approach angles. Now if I were to do it over again, the one major mistake that I made when I was building this, you remember those pieces of uh, steel that are underneath here, I got carried away and I just welded those in really hot. When I did that, the whole thing bowed. Uh, not very much, but it bowed like a banana and I had already welded these side brackets on and what that did was it, it bowed it like this and closed those up and I couldn't get this on. So what I had to do was straighten it back out and that came that made me come up with another idea a video idea that I'll probably do in the future which is um, well for one how to keep your pieces from bowing when you're welding them but two if they do bow how to get them uh, straight again so uh, this thing was probably a half inch too short on these brackets once that bowed it brought them in so I had to straighten that back out. It just barely fits now, so if I were to do it again, I'd probably add um, just a little bit of a gap, maybe an eighth inch or a quarter inch of a gap so that it could slide on and off easier and then just uh, use the bolts to tighten that down. But, turned out really good. Look underneath here. Okay, here's the bottom view. Like I said, I angled these brackets in. Those look good. It's up here. <laughs> It's nice and high. I've got those holes for the uh, winch and I've got room right here. This is where my uh, shackle is going to sit. I'm just going to have one right in the middle there to save a little bit of weight. And if I need to pull from the sides at some point, I'll be able to do that from the tubes that are come down. I purposefully made a flat spot over here for the tubes to come down from the fenders. Um, so we'll have those to pull from if need be. Alright guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully you had a little bit of fun and maybe even learned something there. Don't forget to subscribe. That way uh, you can be notified of all the new videos that come out. It's free to do so. Hit the thumbs up and leave a comment down below. Let us know what you think about the bumper, about the website, about Bleepin' Jeep in general. Whatever. Just leave a comment below. That's it. We'll see you next time. Keep on Bleepin' Jeepin' on. Eh, not sure if I like that sign-off.